And, um, and uh, bass guitar is Ajika Sawyer, and um, Samara Sawyer is on trombone. And today I'd like to welcome everyone to our 20th show of Poetry of Immigrants. And to my uh, far right is Mary Sorensen, and um, next to her is Stella Blair, and uh, next to her is Tessa Gebauer, and the shark today <laughs> is played by Paul Gebauer. So um, we have one more uh, number, and then we'll read some poems. OK? I forgot to say, this is the, um, our theme today is the poetry and music of youth. So today we're celebrating youth poetry and music. Ain't got no home in this world anymore. 
ain't got no home in this world anymore. I mined in all your mines and I gathered all your corn. I've been working, mister, since the day that I was born. Now I worry all the time like I never did before. Ain't got no home in this world anymore. Ain't got no home in this world anymore. and Samara. That was a very relevant song to today and I'm glad that you chose it for the reason that you chose it. It's, it's still important today to think about the people that are coming to our country, the immigrants, which is what the show's theme is always about um, in the background that we keep in mind. So thank you for that. Um, so we have two other guests here today that will really would like to um, read the poems that they have written their original poems, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and would you like to say anything about your poem before you start? So the way I thought of this poem is um, we were at camp and we went on a field trip and um, Stella, she was like writing a poem. This is not her actual poem. It was a mom who lost, always lost her keys. And then I was just thinking of a lot of like monuments and stuff. And I was thinking, oh, maybe the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And I was thinking, oh, the Leaning Tower of Pizza. So this is my, what my poem is about. Once in an exciting villa where no one was vanilla and plain, all of the villagers rode the same cheese train. The train went to a lovely bay that was pretty cray cray. There was a structure called the Leaning Tower of Pizza. Everyone said it was neat. It was Nizza. They called it the Nizza Pizza. The Leaning Tower of Pizza was next to the water. When it was hotter, the sharks would go to the bay. It was May. People wanted to go swimming, so there were about 50 people in the water. Being way hotter than May, the sharks came on to beat the Nizza Pizza. Then it came crashing down on the poor town. But luckily, when the pizza fell, it fell very well. The pizza was a raft, acted like a humongous watercraft. The sharks were too slow. Ever since, everyone and everything heard an echo of the shark waves splashing through the bay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, now we see why the shark is lurking behind you. I really like how you went with the idea of pizza and pizza and kind of riffed off of that blend of, of the way the words came together in your mind. So very well done, thank you. That was, um, uh, Tess that was Tessa, and now we have Stella reading her poem. Thank you very much. Would you like to say anything about it before you begin? Or? Sure. Um, well, 
At my old school, um, we had books about poems, and I used to read them. And when I was looking through like the book, I noticed that a bunch of them were just like crazy poems, like crazy, weird, funny poems. So I kind of wanted to make one kind of like that. So I just um, wrote down the first thing that came into my mind, which was a, a cupcake queen. So that's how I made my poem. It's called The Cupcake Queen. Once in a very nice town where no one was plain and brown, there was a queen that would wear a cupcake hat. She also had a big fat cat. Every time you saw her, she'd be eating a cupcake. Plus, she loved to bake. Her parents um, never liked cupcakes. They hated that treat. They thought it was way too sweet. But she didn't think they were right, so she took a bite. Ever since, she's loved them a lot. Every time she has one, she says, Jackpot! She doesn't eat a cupcake every day because she doesn't want to get sick because she loves to go outdoors even though once she got a tick. The Cupcake Queen is not mean. She is really fun. And I'm sorry to say, but this story is done. <laughs> Very good. Stella, I... I like your poem too. Your your reading is very um, animated, and both of you, um, your your readings are expressive, and um, I can tell that you enjoy words as well as the ideas behind them. And so that's that's a real, a true sign of a of a poet in the making. So keep keep it up. That's great. So this is what the shark actually is. The shark is a poet. Oh, this is who he is. <laughs> ah, okay. Yes. Thank you, Paul, for being the shark. And, and for being such a supportive dad. <laughs> um, so would you like to read some poems now, Jake and Samara? Yeah, sure. Okay, and we'll get back to your poem too. Okay, sure. Samara, why don't you read a poem that you wrote? Okay, so um, my dad, also Jika's dad, is, works at a studio, and so this is basically a poem about, have, about a studio. The studio. Low and high, cables, mics, stands, equipment, fun. Climbing over, dodging under. Fearing left, right, and then, boom, the music starts. The engineer turns up knobs, and the magic begins. Doubles with only one, people talking through walls. Mics picking up sound waves, and all with the help of engineers and interns, bands and inventors, develop deliverers, and many more. The studio is my second home. That's great. That's a, a good picture of what happens in your father's <laughs> recording studio. Do you want to do another one? Okay, so at my school, we have, we did a poetry unit. And one of the things that we did was soundscape poems, which is basically where you what you you like listen to the sounds around you and you basically write a poem from that. So this is my soundscape poem. Paper rustles, trees creak, leaves rustle, people speak. Wind blows, a car goes, a racer squeak, Jack sneezes, May breezes, pencil moving, bird cooing. Would you like to read some poems too, Ashika? Um, yeah, do you have them? Oh, I don't know that I have them. I put them somewhere. Maybe we can get them, I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, would you like to read your poem, and in the meantime, maybe we can sure. find Ashika's poems? Oh. Hello, everybody. My name's Mary. I will be reading um, a poem by Pablo Neruda. And it's from Ode to the Cat. There was something wrong with the animals. Their, ta their tails were too long and they had unfortunate heads. Then they started coming together, little by little, fitting together to make a landscape, developing birthmarks, grace, pep. But the cat, only the cat, turned out finished and proud. Born in a state of total completion, it sticks to itself and knows exactly what it wants. That was very nice. Thank you very much. Oh, Ishika, I'm sorry we don't seem to have your poems right now. Um, 
I'm going to read a poem, in this case, a consolation poem about you. <laughs> Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. This is a poem about Ajika when she was young. And she was a budding artist, as she also is a, a musician now, but an artist too. It's called Three and Three Quarters, which is how old she was then. With a felt-tipped marker, she scribes a wobbly ovoid, slows her arm to close the shape with well-met ends, and she pronounces it a birthday cake. Narrating her process, she adds candles, flicking her whole wrist up to make the lines that radiate from the top half, like the sun. She counts eight candles, her perceived ideal age for wisdom, accomplishment, and privilege. But now, frowning, the seam of her mouth is pulled too tight on one side. She's disappointed. It's round like a birthday cake, but it's not puffed up like a real birthday cake, not like the basketball building. She is referring to what is for her the interstate highway landmark halfway between our houses, the Hall of Fame, highlighted by blue bulbs and geometric brilliance. I struggle in my response to explain the concept of dimension, bypassing for now the technicality that a basketball is a sphere and a birthday cake is a cylinder. I sympathetically agree that drawings are not like 3D buildings that you can walk right into. She nods and giggles. 3D sounds like a funny word. But I laser lock her eyes on my hands and explain the meaning, stretching my palms for each D width, length, depth. But now she adds vertical lines from the bottom of the birthday cake to indicate legs, and horizontal lines from the side of the cake to represent arms. She slants a mouth, a mirror of her own mouth in concentration, and crushes the felt-tipped point into two starburst eyes. Now the birthday cake is a birthday cake person, she announces. And she spurks, sliding her eyes across for signs of appreciation for her absurd modification. I hope that birthday cake wants to be eaten, I tease, sh and smack my lips menacingly. Oh, Grammy, you're so crazy, she shrieks, sliding her legs down my lap in pantomime escape. And crazy Grammy is already planning on her next visit to bring clay. Thank you very much. We're going to wrap up this first half of the show, and we'll be back. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen, all for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How are we doing? So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. For real? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time! Attention travelers, next Tuesday a major power outage will cause complete chaos throughout the city. Water, phone, and internet service will be in short supply. There will likely be panic citywide. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate.
With newspapers and media outlets merging all over the country, communities are losing their local voice. There's so much going on in the community that I think doesn't really, there's a lot of folks who are unaware of it. And I think things like this can bring it out into the community and in that way kind of bring the community together. Information and to our residents is the key to good governance. And with the national media and local media not often covering us, this is an excellent opportunity for us constantly to communicate with our constituents and, and also to have them communicate with us. The best outcomes will be achieved through a community-based organization that grows its operation and scale by means of locally produced programming. All of our content is volunteer produced, so we do shows from talk shows to music shows, uh, working with high schools. VSCTV is committed to ensuring that the investment made to secure these powerful tools will pay great dividends in the community for many, many years. Welcome back to the second half of Poetry of Immigrants, our youth show. And Ajika, you have a few poems to read that we didn't find before, but we found them now. Thank you. All right, so this first poem, well, okay. So in the first half, Samara, my sister, was talking about how her class did a poetry unit. And this first poem is also from my class's poetry unit. Um, and the assignment was to write an I am from poem. So here it is. It's called Studio Rat. I am from the digital audio interface, mic preamps, ISO booths. I am from not turning tone knobs down, at least not all the way, from early reader audiobooks and patch bays. I am from tracking, mixing, mastering. I'm from the Tempo 115, practicing every day. I am from getting bored of Suzuki violin. I am from unfinished EPs and low frequencies, Soka, Calypso. I am a studio rat. All right, this one I wrote just a couple days ago, and it's about the instruments that I play. A trio of strings. Some call it a fiddle, others a violin. It's the same instrument, it just depends on how you play it. Like the upright bass, another instrument I can play. You can play reggae, jazz, Using a bow, you can play more or orchestral music. You can accompany things played on the fiddle, or if you prefer, the violin. But my favorite is electric bass. Yes, it needs more equipment. Yes, that equipment is harder to lug around, but it's louder, more versatile. The low booming is a sound I have known since just a few days of age. I started playing electric bass at the age of five. It was all because of my dad, really. He plays it, and I wanted to be just like him. I've practiced every day for seven years. It hasn't always been easy. I went through a period of time where I would do about 10 minutes a day and then cry because I thought I hadn't did a good enough job. I broke my arm just last year and couldn't play very well with a cast on. Fiddle, I started around age eight. My younger sister, younger by three months, five, er, three years, five months, and 30 days, started playing it. And of course, I didn't want her to play the same number of instruments as me. I had to play at least one more than her, so I started fiddle. Upright bass I started just last year. It was one of the many instruments that my dad played, but I did not. My sister had started playing trombone, so naturally I had to play another instrument. Upright bass was big and interesting. It was a type of bass, and it would be easier to learn. My second and third instruments I started just to prove that I could do more than Samara. I have grown to love them, and so I play a trio of strings. Very nice, thank you. A little musical history. And we have some more poems to be read, children's poems. Okay, Stella. I'm reading a poem called The Bagel. I stopped to pick up the bagel, rolling away in the wind, annoyed, annoyed with myself for having dropped it as we were a port in, faster and faster rolled with me running after it, bent low, me grinding my teeth, and I found myself doubled over and rolling down the street, heads over heels, one complete somersault 
after another, like a bagel, and strangely happy with myself. <laughs> so two poems about baked goods today. Huh? <laughs> I she see. A, to bake. I see a theme there. Oh, you're a baker yeah, too. Huh? A baker. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you very much. So I read that well. And do you have one? You don't want to read another one? Okay. Me and Samara have one more. You have another poem? Okay. We'll, yeah, go ahead. You, well, they'll read one while you look, and when you're ready, give me a heads up. Okay. okay. So this huh? is a poem for two voices that Samara wrote. It's called The Bee. Buzzing. Bumbling. Swarming. swarming like a leaf. Poised. And, and ready. ready. Don't ask us why. why. We're, We're busy. busy. Buzzing. Bumbling. <laughs> swarming. swarming. Nice. Like a hive kind of thing, yeah. where the hive mind yeah. comes together in one. That's nice. Did you, did you, um, was that, have you ever heard of that done before? Poem for Two Voices? Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, I got the inspiration because at my school, a swarm of bees came into our music room, and so we couldn't be there. And then there's like a beekeeper who came to like get the bees out. So basically thought of it that way. Okay, so the, your idea came from reality, a yeah. real life experience. Did you find one, Tessa? I got one. Okay. Shark okay. Okay, Paul's going to read a poem. Which one, honey? The summer. Summer? Okay, this, this poem is called Summer. I like hot days. Hot days. Sweat is what you got days. Bugs buzzing from cousin to cousin. Juices dripping, running and ripping. Catch the one you love days. Birds peeping, old men sleeping. Lazy days, daisy lay, lay. Beaming and dreaming of hot days, hot days. Sweat is what you got days. Thanks, Tess. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. Okay, so um, do I have time for a poem before you girls, the girls play? One, two poems, okay. Um, so I uh, would like to um, present a poem that I wrote for Samara, also when she was smaller. Um, this, this poem actually took place around Thanksgiving when we were setting the table for Thanksgiving, I assigned each of my grandchild something to do to help get ready. And I told Tamara to set the utensils, and at five it was probably a big word for her. She didn't quite know what it meant until I explained it. And later, but she put it in her mind, and later she knew she incorporated it into another idea. I called this Athena at five. Should we sing songs or play a game, I asked. She elevated her chin as a fulcrum on the scale to weigh her choices. Her grandmother recently entrusted her with the task of setting the table. Her older sister had been eager to share her new curriculum at school, Greek mythology. And powerful women, beautiful, wise, and strong, were not unfamiliar to her. Her knowledge was expanding. Entertainment in the family car was time shared. No handheld devices flatlining their imagination were supplied. So she suggested, let's play animal, vegetable, mineral, goddess, utensil. Her categories would continue to expand, each one making the game more interesting. She loved owls also. Okay, would you like to get your uh, fiddles ready? That's good. I have one more poem. Oh, one more poem? Yeah, go okay. ahead. That would be great. Yeah, while they're setting up. Um, Thank you very much. This is, uh, this is one by Emily Dickinson, who I'm sure everybody is familiar with. It is called Hope is the Thing with Feathers. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without words and never stops at all. And the sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land 
and on the strangest sea. Yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. Thank you. That's, that's one of my favorites of, of Emily or anybody. Who used to call Emily Dickens and Emily Dickens chicken? Me. You, yeah. <laughs> One more? Okay. Would you like to read another one? Uh, let's see. I can read it. Thank you. You're good. Okay. I'll read one more. Stay, you must dare and enter with hopes of sayings. Quick sand in the marshes and all the roads leading to the castle that doesn't exist. But there it is as promised with its perfect bridge above the crocodiles and its doors forever open. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so... I can read one more, sure one. Okay, I'm going to read a um, a poem. <laughs> so one time I went to visit my granddaughters, and um, I told them I would do anything you know with them that they chose to do that uh, day, and they said they wanted to go hiking on Rattlesnake Gutter. And I'm not so crazy about rattlesnakes, and you know, <laughs> but there really weren't any there. They had been there a long time ago. But I tried to, you know, be cool and unafraid. And so this poem is called "Why Rattlesnake Gutter." Because a choice once given to a child should be honored whenever possible. Because they promised to accept whatever limits were safe for the climb. Because a spring zephyr enticed because poetry boxes along the trail had empty pages, because there was exhilaration and upward climb, because the intrepid one needed to explore and the cautious one refused to be left behind. You can guess which ones those are. <laughs> uh, now you're both both. <laughs> um, because the purple trillium budded on a mossy ledge, because bicycle helmets were worn and party shoes stayed in the car. Because a hidden water chortled beneath a tunnel of boulders. Because the topmost ledge, from the topmost ledge, the view to the gutter was triumphant. Because the cautious one counseled and demonstrated digging her fingernails into the stoil, soil for better purchase and climbing because the glinting mica and sparkling quartz and cool depth of rocks and nooks and crannies and shady overhangings. Because the intrepid one was known at three to be a mounting goat. That's how she thought of herself. Because the pungent smell of bracket fungus and leaf mold. Because the hope is to be remembered for telling stories and going on adventures. Thank you. So that's, that's why we did rat Rattlesnake Gutter. Do you remember that at all? No. Nope. Yeah, kind of. You do, you do, you don't, yeah. Oh, well, okay. So, we have time for another poem or two, or, or no? We have 15 minutes. Oh, we have 15 minutes. So you have another poem you wanted to read some more? And you have some more books, uh, poems you'd like to read oh, from the book? Do. Okay. Do. Samara, you read a poem and you guys find one and we'll do a few more. This is Mr. Rogers' voice coming down from the side. Oh, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Frank Rogers Crowley, we love to hear your voice. <laughs> wish, wish you were here, but we know you're on camera today. I, I guess you're not supposed to talk to the fourth wall, huh? <laughs> or something. <laughs> but if it's Mr. Rogers, you can break all the rules. So this one I wrote and it doesn't have a name, so here you go. The rushing water, the frothing waves, the weeping willow, the buzzing of people on the, in the street, and me walking with a feeling of happiness, like everything is gonna be okay. 
So this is another one that I wrote at school. We were looking at pictures of, I mean, we were looking at flowers, and then we wrote a picture and a poem about the flower. So this is the poem about the flower. The leaves are swords before battle. The fairy battle, they call it. Their hats waving in the wind, and then attack. They surrender. That's very nice, Samara. That last poem is a picture of something being something else, and that is called a conceit. When you write a poem about something being something else, and the whole poem is about that one thing being the other thing. That's, um, a, it's a, that's a very um, classic kind of theme for writing a I poem. I think it was a giant snowdrop, but I have no idea if that's right. A giant snowdrop? I can yeah. picture that. Okay, did you find another, another poem, uh, Tessa? Yeah. What did you find? Hedgehog. Oh, hedgehog, okay. He ambles along like a walking pen stops and curls up like a chestnut bird. He's not only, he's not worried because he's so little, nobody is going to slap him around. I'm going to be reading a poem called The Question. People always say to me, what do you think you'll be, what do you think you'll like to be when you grow up? And I say, why? I think, I think I'd like to be the sky or be the plane or train or mouse or maybe a haunted house or something furry, rough and wild, or maybe I will stay a child. Very nice. Would you like to read another one? Um, how about we'll pass it over to the shark. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Shark. Find something you can really sink your teeth into. Right. <laughs> okay. It's called Thank You, My Dear. Thank you, my dear. You came and you did, well to come. I needed you. You have made love blaze up in my breast. Bless you. Bless you as often as the hours have been endless to me while you were gone. That's very nice. Okay. Okay. For friendship. For friendship, make a chain that holds, to be bound to others, two by two, a walk, a garland, handed by hands that cannot move unless they hold. Here you go, Mayor. Oh, Frank, okay. Hi. 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 You're good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Frank, welcome. Welcome to the party. <laughs> Thank you so much. I loved your music and your poetry. If anybody should be in the youth <laughs> show, it should be you. So thanks for manning the camera, and uh, welcome to the show. How about another one? All right, let's go with another. This one is called uh, Revival. Snow is a mind falling, a continuous breath of climbs, loops, spirals, like, wh like white fireflies wanting to land, finding a wind between houses, diving like moths into their own light, so that one wonders if snow is a wing's long memory across winter. And I'm going to just pick one at random myself. All right, sounds good. Okay. Oh, sure. Of course. Pushkin. Um, Pushkin wrote a wonderful love poem. Harasho. Harasho. Ya vas lubil. Ya vas lubil. About lost love, you know. 
He's such a wonderful now. He, he, That's what mommy's favorite. Hara Shaw. So, спасибо большое. Очень приятно. Я начал учиться русскому языку в шестьдесят первом году, давно уже. <laughs> Love is a place. Love is a place, and through this place of love, move with brightness of peace. All places, yes, is a world, and is in this world of yes, live, skillfully curled, all worlds. E. E. Cummings, he was a wild man. He was. Gemma. How about the Panther? Oh, what a great choice. Uh, by Rilke. His vision from the constantly passing bars has grown so weary that it cannot hold anything else. It seems to him there are a thousand bars and behind the bars, no world. As he paces in cramped circles over and over, the movement of his powerful soft strides is like a ritual dance around a center in which a mighty will stands paralyzed. Only at times, the curtain of the pupils lifts quietly. An image enters in, rushes down through the tensed, arrested muscles, plunges into the heart, and is gone. Ooh, that's it's a pretty heavy one. So that's, that is really a cautionary tale for zoos, isn't it? Let's keep our panthers wild and let's keep them all alive in the wild too. So animals and plants, I have some gifts for you. I have some gifts for you. Oh, and Paul, could you help me out? I have one for each of our budding poets here. Ah, you know what that is? Lavender, and at night it comes. Oh yeah, and yes. There you go. There you go. And now I'm gonna do a little magic and poof and disappear again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it time for the wrap up? Yes. Okay, girls, when you're ready. Okay, so this is a set of two
very much, to you again tomorrow, and all our friends today who came to the Poetry of Immigrants Youth Show. And that was really a good poem of, of poem of two voices in, in, ver, in music, right? Very lovely. Thank you, everyone. That's it. Yes! Yay!